Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for these sheets and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe to put your family first next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Marvel's first power couple, Reed Richards and Sue Storm. You might think they fell in love due to their similarly alliterative names, but if you can't see that, I understand, it's a bit of a stretch. We'll kick things off with Sue because she's the best and deserves everything in the world. Am I tipping my hand to reveal that Sue Storm is one of my favorite Marvel characters? Maybe, but I'm allowed to play favorites, I can do whatever I want. Boys are jerks and superheroes suck. Good morning. For our goals, obviously we need to turn invisible, that's the most basic version of your power. Next, we need to make some force fields, so not only will you be invisible, your enemies will also have to get through shields. Finally, we'll throw those force fields at other people. It can't all be defense, every once in a while you've gotta attack. For Zats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Intelligence will be number one, you are a scientist after all, it's nice to have things in common with your partner. Charisma next, one thing you don't have in common with your partner is that you can talk to people without talking down to them. Dexterity after that, stealth is pretty important for the character whose superpower is being stealthy. Follow that up with wisdom, medicine is a wisdom skill, you have four PhDs in biochemistry, I think that's because comic book authors don't totally understand how the PhD process works, but it means you're good at life science. Constitution is a bit low, obviously we're just gonna try to not get hit, but we'll dump strength, you don't really need to do any heavy lifting with Ben around, and when Ben isn't around, Jenny joins the squad, so always surrounded by the buff buddies. Sue is a human. We'll actually stick with human rather than custom lineage to round two stats up instead of one. For your feet, skill expert raises an ability score by one like charisma. You get an extra skill like insight and expertise in a skill like insight, doubling your proficiency bonus with that skill. Sue is the heart of the team. You need to have heart to hearts with people. Feelings are important. Bump your dexterity and intelligence with your two free points. Take medicine for your skill of choice and the sage background for arcana and history. It sounds very official, but you're pretty down to earth for a girl who got her doctorate as a teenager. We'll kick things off as a rogue, which might seem a bit weird, but they get the most skills, stealth, sleight of hand, persuasion, perception, all options for you and options you should take. You also get expertise in two more skills, persuasion and stealth will be my picks. Stealth because you're invisible and persuasion because you have to talk to people, you and your brother, but he's a little too spicy sometimes. You also get sneak attack, but weirdly, we're not taking rogue levels for that. You get an extra d6 of damage to creatures when you have advantage on an attack roll or an ally within five feet of them, but you have to be using a finesse or ranged weapon, which really isn't your deal. Give Susan a switchblade. I guarantee the MC you will do that. Pull this up in two years to confirm that I'm a genius. We're gonna bounce over to Wizard right away, no reason to start here unless you like saving throws. But dexterity and intelligence feel better for Sue than an intelligence and wisdom to me. Maybe that's just me. You get spells and cantrips anyway. Thunderclap forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a five foot radius of you, dealing 1d6 thunder damage to those that fail, hitting everyone with a little invisible wave. Message lets you whisper a message to someone within 120 feet of you by pointing at them and they can whisper back to you. The only thing that gives it away is the pointing, but if you're invisible, not really an issue. Oh, you can to spell, so that'll drop invisibility. Maybe we'll get something for that later. Finally, Minor Illusion creates an illusion that fits in a five foot cube, make the desk with pencils on it look like a desk without pencils on it. Then when Reed needs a pencil, he won't be able to find one. Pranked. For your first level spells, there unfortunately aren't any invisibility options just yet, but we can grab Mage Armor to make your AC 13 plus your dexterity modifier when you're not wearing armor. Shield to add five to your AC as a reaction for some basic force fields. Absorb Elements gives you resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage as a reaction, and you can capture a D6 of that that damage to pump onto someone else next round. That's not really all that good. The resistance can be nice though. Featherfall lets you reduce falling damage for up to five falling creatures as a reaction. That's one extra creature. You only ever hang out in groups of four. Makes it easier to get tables at restaurants, you know? Magic Missile sends out three bolts of force that deal 1d4 plus one force damage each and automatically hit. Obviously nobody can dodge it if they can't see it coming. Finally, Thunder Wave forces a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 15 foot cube in front of you, dealing 2d8 thunder damage to those that fail and pushing them back 10 feet. Half damage and no pushing if they succeed. As a wizard, you can also use Arcane Recovery to recover half your wizard level in spell slots on a short rest. Sometimes, you just need a nap. Second level wizards get to choose a school. I was considering Illusion, but that just lets you make more tangible illusions. Not really a Sue Storm thing. Abjuration will help you protect your family. That's a very Sue Storm thing. Not right away. You have to protect yourself first with Arcane Ward, letting you create a shield that absorbs damage equal to double your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier whenever you cast an Abjuration spell of first level or higher. Shield and Mage Armor both work 
work for this. So when you set up a force field armor, you also set up an extra force field. It's fields on fields. For this level spell, detect magic lets you sense cosmic forces and what type of magic is causing them. Tensor's floating disc makes an invisible table that can hold up to 500 pounds, helpful to make a flat surface if Reed and you need to do some tech stuff on an alien planet with rocky terrain. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Finally, we get invisibility. That lets you become invisible for an hour, depending on your concentration, though it ends early when you make an attack or cast a spell. You can still take the help action, so if you want to safely run around and give your family advantage, that's an option. Also, let's clarify that invisibility gives creatures disadvantage on attacks against you. You get advantage on attacks against creatures who can't see you, and you can hide whenever you want. If you'd rather do something offensive, hold person paralyzes a humanoid that fails a wisdom saving throw for a minute depending on your concentration, giving your allies advantage on attacks against them within five feet, and those creatures automatically fail dexterity saving throws against things like fireball. It's a really solid option for the first family. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement or feat. Start investing in your intelligence, making your force fields harder to avoid, and giving you bigger arcane wards. For this level spell, see invisibility lets you see invisible creatures for an hour. Sue can also make other invisible stuff visible. Little known power. She's a master of all things on the spectral spectrum. Shatter is a bigger thunder blast, forcing a constitution saving throw on creatures in a 10 foot radius, dealing 3d8 thunder damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Inorganic materials and creatures made of inorganic materials have disadvantage on that save, so doombots are gonna get wrecked. Fifth level wizards get third level spells. Counter spell shuts down spells of third level or lower automatically, and higher level spells within an intelligence check of 10 plus the spell's level. So, 15 or higher, you can drop a ninth level spell with a third level spell slot. Abjuration wizards will even get better at using this. If we go far enough into wizard, who knows? Stick around. Watch time is important for the YouTube algorithm. That's why I'm doing double videos every day this month. Please watch all of them. Fly gives a creature a flying speed of 60 feet for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. If you need to get mobile, you don't need a fantastic car. You can just fly. Sixth level abjuration wizards get projected ward, letting you send your ward to protect a family member within 30 feet of you. It would be great if you could stay invisible while casting spells, just refreshing the ward by counter spelling and blocking the damage off. Wouldn't that be so fun for you and infuriating for your DM? For this level spells, tongues lets you speak any language to talk to creatures that speak at least one language. A little universal translator is important in space, in the microverse, Atlantis, hell, in certain parts of Canada they speak French. Protection from energy gives a creature resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage for an hour. I don't think Johnny is ever going to attack you, but aliens got all sorts of weird attacks, especially Super Scroll. He's got like all of your powers. Seventh level wizards get fourth level spells. Greater invisibility makes you invisible for a minute depending on your concentration, but you can make all the attacks and cast all the spells you want. So stay invisible, counterspell everything, and ward off non-spell attacks. Just bully your DM until they give everyone true sight. Wait, don't do that. Otiluk's Resilient Sphere creates a force field that no damage or spells can escape from or get into. Do you want to lock yourself or someone else down? If you're trying to lock someone else down, they can make a dexterity saving throw to jump out. Otherwise, Dr. Doom just doesn't get to play for a minute depending on your concentration. Or you could lock yourself inside if your team is somewhere else to keep yourself safe while you wait for the rest of the party to get there. Eighth level wizards get another ability score improvement, so cap off your intelligence for the best wards, the best spells, and the best science. For this level spell, Stone Skin gives a creature resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for an hour depending on your concentration. It doesn't have to be like Ben's rocky complexion. It can just be reflavored as a little active shielding. Hallucinatory Terrain makes a 150 foot cube of terrain look like different terrain, helping you hide something that the villains might be looking for. Ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells. Hold Monster is like Hold Person, but with no humanoid restriction, so some of the more cosmic weirdos can get locked down. Wall of Force creates a wall of force that can't be destroyed by anything other than disintegrate. It's made up of 10 10 by 10 foot panels or a hemispherical dome with a 10 foot radius. It even extends into the ethereal plane, so not even ghosts can get through it. 10th level abjuration wizards get improved abjuration, letting you add your proficiency bonus to your counter spell rolls, so that's plus 10, letting you stop 9th level spells by rolling a 9 or higher. That's some cosmic power. For some cosmic damage, Steel Wind Strike lets you make a melee spell attack against up to 6 creatures dealing 6d10 force damage. You use a weapon to do this. It's supposed to be a big nothing personnel kid flourish, but I think it's totally fair to just call it a rapid blast of invisible energy. Skill empowerment lets you give a creature expertise in a skill they're already proficient with. You can use it on yourself to boost one of your other skills or to encourage your family to be the best they can be. 11th level wizards get 6th level spells. Globe of Invulnerability keeps out all spells of 5th level or lower in a 10 foot radius, sort of like a resilient sphere, but the whole group can get inside. Major Image is a 3rd level spell that creates an illusion in a 20 foot cube use it to hide something inside, or do something out of character and make a little bamboozlery. I won't tell anyone. 12th level wizards get another ability score improvement. Let's start working on that dexterity modifier. Obviously your stealth should be pretty good. It's already pretty good, but it will get better. We're actually pretty set on spells here, so I guess Longstrider adds 10 feet to a creature's movement speed, helping you fly a little faster. And identify lets you know what a magical item is, what it does, and how many charges it has left. 
helping you figure out what various cosmic nonsense you're dealing with. At this point, we're going to bounce back to Rogue, not for their offensive options, but because of their defensive strategies. Cunning action lets you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action, pairing really well with the ability to hide whenever you want when you're invisible. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype, and remember when I said we were set for spells? I lied. Pretty sneaky, right? Arcane tricksters get mage hand for free, and your mage hand is invisible, letting you pick up objects of 10 pounds or less, and as a mage hand ledger domain, you can control it as a bonus action and use sleight of hand to move objects into people's pockets, pick a person's pocket, or pick locks, getting things done with invisible hands. You can also grab two more cantrips like sword burst to force a dexterity saving throw on creatures within five feet of you, dealing 3d6 force damage to those that fail. It's like thunder wave, but slightly different and more forcey, which I would say is a more accurate damage type. Maybe I should have grabbed that one earlier. Mending lets you put two pieces of something back together or fix a crack in something for little repairs that are always important in space. For first level spells, charm person forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they're charmed by you for an hour, giving you advantage on charisma checks with them. Everybody loves Sue. Some people love her a little too much. Silent image makes an illusion that fits into a 15 foot cube, but has no sound. And that's fine. The things you make invisible don't make any extra sound anyway. It just works. Finally, jump triples a creature's jump distance for a minute. If you want to give Ben a little boost, Johnny and Reed don't need it. They're already pretty mobile. Since we're multi-classing spellcasters, check page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out how many spells you have at any given level. Four level rogues get an ability score improvement. Keep pushing that dexterity higher. If you stay hidden, you never have to worry about getting hit. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you have the damage from incoming attacks as long as you can see the source of damage. Arcane ward activates automatically, so if you've cast an abjuration spell, that's 27 damage reduction. Then you cut it in half. Ben is not the only tank on the team. Sixth level rogues get another set of expertise. Sleight of hand will make your mage hands better, and medicine will make up for the fact that we can't invest in your wisdom as much as I'd like. Seventh level rogues get evasion, letting you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones. With your high dexterity, Johnny can throw a fireball in there and not worry about you taking too much damage. Actually, his modifier is capped. It might still be bad. Our capstone is the eighth level of rogue for one last ability score improvement. Cap off that dexterity to be the best sneaker we've ever made. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can be invisible, hide as a bonus action, and add 17 to your stealth checks while invisible. That's bonkers. You can just stay hidden, counterspell everyone, and give yourself a 27 HP shield to keep yourself and your family safe. Finally, you have a ton of social skills to get things done before initiative gets rolled. For weaknesses, you don't have a ton of HP, so if someone does find you, that could be an issue. You're also low on strength and don't have acrobatics, so creatures could grapple you and end your hit and run strategies. Finally, you have a lot of options for your reaction, but you can only use one at a time, so shield, projecting a ward, and counterspell will force you to choose what you want to use. But you're not the only one on the team. Don't be afraid to lean on your family for support. Stay out of sight and don't feel like you have to do everything yourself. Maybe the rest of the team can be flexible. Speaking of flexibility... Oh! Nice shot. But rubber's an insulator, so your electrical powers can't really hurt me. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to stretch, both in terms of definitions of abilities, but also big rubber man arms. Next, we need to be a genius. Reed makes lesser scientists like Victor Von Doom, Tony Stark, Hank Pym, and Bruce Banner look like himbos. Finally, we need to get fully loaded with a little robot bug that you're really gonna love. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. You need to be really flexible for this one. Intelligence will be number one. You bring the team to space, wreck them with superpowers, and are the only one who could figure out how to fix them. Dexterity next, your bones are almost as flexible as your ethics when it comes to scientific advancement. Wisdom after that, medicine is a wisdom skill, so your knowledge of the human body is coming from here. Follow that up with constitution, obviously you're a bit better at bouncing back with your plastic personage. Strength is a bit low, Ben can handle the heavy lifting, and will dump charisma. If Sue wasn't there to act as a diplomat, your personal charms would almost certainly lead to your death. Reed is a human, but he got souped up in space, so we'll go custom lineage, just because I want plus two to one stat instead of plus one to two stats. That's that's it. Fair feat, the martial adept feat, gives you a d6 superiority die you can spend on two maneuvers. Lunging attack is the obvious pick, increasing the range of a melee weapon attack by five feet, and you can add the die to the damage. You don't have to be using a melee weapon to do that. You can do that with an unarmed attack. Unarmed attacks are melee weapon attacks, even if they don't use melee weapons. It's weird. A bit less obvious, but maybe even more in character, tactical assessment will let you add your die to an investigation, history, or insight check to put that big brain to work. But your intelligence with your two free points, take acrobatics for your skill of choice, and the sage background for arcana and history. It's basically the nerd background. You're a huge nerd. Reed is also a huge nerd, but you're watching a 30 minute video about Marvel characters in Dungeons and Dragons. Even he's not that nerdy. We'll get things off as an artificer. You were an inventor before you were a basketball. So grab two skills from the artificer list, like nature and medicine, to round off your massive knowledge. You know what's more impressive than this garage full of Lamborghinis? Proficiency with nature and medicine. Artificers also get proficiency with thieves tools, tinkerers tools, 
and another tool of your choice, Alchemist seems very scientific. You get magical tinkering to put tiny magical effects into tiny non-magical items, get creative with puffs of smoke, smells, visual messages, tiny sounds, it's up to you. You also get spells and cantrips, mending lets you put two pieces of something back together, fix a crack in something, inventing is easier with a non-shattered test tube. Message lets you point at someone to whisper something and they can whisper back, tell Sue you love her, she'll tell you to stop pointing at her, she's trying to be sneaky. For your first level spells, Long Strider increases a creature's movement speed, your strides literally get longer, Disguise Self lets you change your appearance for an hour, Sue isn't the only one who can be sneaky, actually your charisma is terrible, you're not going to bamboozle anyone with this. Your charisma is so bad that people are going to make the logical jump to this guy has a rubber face and rubber powers rather than just thinking their buddy is acting weird. But since they have to roll investigation against your spell DC to see through it, you might still get away with it. Second level artificers get infusions, special inventions to make the first family the best family. Mind Sharpener has four charges, letting you automatically succeed on concentration saving throws as a reaction, recharging 1d4 charges at dawn, helping you multitask a little bit better. Setting stones are two stones that you can communicate between the two. I would bet Reed built a walkie-talkie in kindergarten and found someone willing to talk to him on the other end by the time he was a freshman in college. That sounds mean, but it was only a two-year gap for him. Goggles of Night will let you see in the dark with your weak custom lineage eyes, and a bag of holding can fit 500 pounds or 64 cubic feet. I'd imagine you have some pretty deep pockets. That's a pun, but yeah, Reed's rich. Third level artificers can choose an artificer specialty. Battlesmiths are battle ready, letting you use your intelligence modifier with magical weapons. It would be great if you used weapons. Sometimes you turn your hands into hammers. I'd count that. That's actually alter self. More on that later. More importantly, you get a steel defender, a little Herbie that you can guide as a bonus action, can deflect attacks to keep you safe. Check the stats in Tasha's or the Eberron book. It's a bit awkward to try and explain a stat block with audio instead of just eh, reading it. You also get some extra spells for free. Shield lets you add five to your AC as a reaction. You can make your arm into a literal shield. Personally, I like the flavor of bending your insides to look like a donut, man. That's more fun for me. Heroism makes a creature immune to fear and gives them temporary HP equal to your intelligence modifier at the start of your turn. You're kind of the leader of the group. It's named after you. Well, it's named after your pseudonym, I guess. Fourth level artificers get an ability score improvement. Round up your intelligence and wisdom. I want intelligence capped off as soon as possible, but you get no benefits from odd numbers. Optimization is pretty in character for you. Fifth level battlesmiths get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once with your action. You've hit them once initially, then you hit them with a bounce back as well. More importantly, you get second level spells like enlarge reduce, which will let you make a creature larger or smaller. If they're larger, they also get advantage on strength checks and saves, deal an extra d4 of damage with their weapons. Unfortunately, that does not work with your unarmed attacks. Give Mr. Fantastic a switchblade. Guarantee you Marvel is going to do that. Come back to this video in 2023 if I am wrong. Making a creature smaller has the opposite effect. They can make a constitution saving throw to resist. Reed could figure out pim particles if he really wanted to. There are several Fantastic Four adventures in the microverse. Obviously, the best way to use this is to make yourself bigger to fill up a 10 by 10 foot cube and use lunging attack to attack even further away. Sixth level artificers get tool expertise, letting you double your proficiency bonus for any tool check you're proficient with. Trust me, you do not want to fail these in space. Everyone on the ship will get superpowers. Those superpowers will bring you closer together, help you save the world countless times, and spend the rest of your life with the woman you love. Fail these checks in space. You definitely want to fail these checks in space. You also get two more infusions. Spell refueling ring lets you give yourself another spell of third level or lower once per day. We'll definitely want third level spells later, but second level spells aren't bad either. Cloak of the Manta Ray lets you breathe underwater and gives you a 60 foot swimming speed. Stretch your lungs to be larger. Turn your feet into propellers and get down to Atlantis. Namor is hitting on your wife. Seven level artificers get Flash of Genius, letting you add your intelligence modifier to a creature's ability check or saving throw within 30 feet of you an amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier. It lets brainy boys beat leaders. You don't always need charisma. Tell Johnny the smart plan, have him explain it with his persuasion. That's how families work together. You can also scoop up another spell like Alter Self, which lets you do three things. You can change your appearance without illusion, though it's not much better than Disguise Self. You can give yourself a swimming speed, but you've got infusions for that. I'm here for natural weapons, which turn your arms into magical natural weapons that have plus one to attack rolls and deal 1d6 plus your intelligence modifier in a damage type you like. The damage type is variable. You can make hammers for smashing, blades for slashing, or spikes for stabbing. The reason that they get to use your intelligence modifier for damage is because of battle ready, and you get the benefits from enlarge reduce on them as well. Wait, you can only concentrate on one spell at a time. Damn. If only you had ways to concentrate on two spells. That would make you like the biggest genius we've ever built. Eighth level artificers can tie the other geniuses we've built with another ability score improvement to cap off your intelligence modifier. That's not only a maximum spell DC, but also maximum flashes of genius. At this point, we'll bounce around. The rubber man should, after all, starting with monk. First level monks get martial arts, letting you make unarmed attacks with your dexterity modifier and an extra unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make one with your action. They deal a d4 of damage, which isn't great, but it's a solid backup if you don't want to spend a slot on alter self or you could spend the slot 
slot on alter self and use it for all of your unarmed attacks it's weird it's an unarmed attack with a weapon the wording on it is really really weird and it's different than any like divine smite type thing that exists in DD that says oh you've got to use a weapon it's weird but it works for both it's one of the very few things that works for both you also get unarmored defense making your ac 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor that suit you wear is pretty tight i don't think we have to call it armor especially since it's designed to stretch as far as you can without hurting yourself darling it's an edna mode second level monks get key points they can use to do cool science stuff like step of the wind letting you dash or disengage with a bonus action and double your jump distance i'd imagine your elasticity makes you a tough guy to pin down patient vents lets you dodge as a bonus action even if you don't run away you should be hard to hit flurry of blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action each of those can be buffed by alter self normally i don't really love that spell but it works really well with a monk dip not gonna lie finally you get auto long strider with unarmored movement buffing your movement speed by 10 feet when you're not wearing armor and you can buff that even further with long strider and step of the wind you're gonna be fast but you'll need to be if you want to keep up with dash wait wrong four person family member team with rubber powers owned by disney my bad third level monk is what we really came here for letting you choose a monastic tradition like way of the astral self that'll give you astral arms letting you force a dexterity saving throw on creatures within 10 feet of you dealing 2d4 force damage to those that fail that isn't what we need what we need is the extra five feet of distance this gives your unarmed attacks so now your lunging attack has 15 feet of reach and with enlarge you already threaten a bigger area and those attacks deal force damage in case you don't have magic up from alter self to pass victor's heavy armor other little benefits you can use your wisdom modifier for attack rolls and strength checks that use your arms it's a little bit better but won't be by the end of this you also get deflect missiles letting you reduce damage from ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level as a reaction and even bounce the ammo back by spending a key point if you drop it to zero every time you do this give a long-winded explanation about the conservation of momentum the team's gonna love it for the monks get an ability score improvement start working on that dexterity for more flexibility if you get grappled you're not really playing mr fantastic you're playing mr gets grappled you also get slow fall letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction just turn yourself into a parachute and save the team some money now we're gonna bounce over to fighter for a fighting style like superior technique which gives you two more maneuvers i don't care about but another superiority die to use which i do care about for an extra lunge i guess commander strike will let you give ben an attack as a bonus action using his reaction and adding a d6 to the damage remind him what time it is punch in time grappling strike lets you make a grapple check on creatures as a bonus action after you make an attack and add a d6 to the athletics check you're not great at this now but we'll get something later to let you wrap people up like new york's much more popular hero rap man you also get second wind letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest obviously you bounce back a little bit quicker than most second level fighters get action surge letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest you could use it for up to six attacks in a single turn if you want to turn yourself into a windmill or use it to get one of your buffs up and attack in the same turn you're smart i trust you enough to figure out the best use for it third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and large it doesn't feel large enough i want to be huge or should i say giant because rune knights get giant's might to make yourself large give yourself advantage on strength checks and saves and an extra d6 to one weapon attack per round follow that up with enlarge and now you're filling a 15 by 15 foot cube pop the astral arms and now you're threatening 40 squares on a standard 5 by 5 map with opportunity attacks and you can pop lunging attack to hit 72 squares with melee attacks that's bonkers you also get two runes the cloud rune gives you advantage on sleight of hand and deception checks and lets you move an attack from one creature within 30 feet of you to hit another creature within 30 feet of you so nobody hits your family they hit a doom bot instead after a little rubber band railroading once per short rest the frost rune gives you advantage on animal handling and intimidation checks and lets you give yourself a plus two bonus to strength and constitution checks for 10 minutes per short rest you have arms that can make a pulley system and you understand pulley systems inherently fourth level fighters get another ability ability score improvement keep pushing that dexterity up higher it will help your unarmed attacks and dodging abilities i really do wish he had better ac but there's no way to do that and get the massive noggin you need speaking of that noggin and better ac let's go back to artificer for third level spells like haste adding two to a creature's ac giving them advantage on dexterity saving throws doubling their movement speed and giving them an extra action to dash disengage hide use an object or make one more attack less for a minute depending on your concentration after that you've stretched a bit too far and need to take a round off of actions and reactions unfortunately there's no way to have this and enlarge up at the same time concentration won't let you do it you also get arcane jolt here or rather herbie does giving him an extra 2d6 force damage with his attacks or healing creatures 2d6 within 30 feet of him after he makes an attack an amount of times per day equal to your intelligence modifier that's better bots and better buddies better body buddies 10th level artificers are magical item savants letting you tune up to four magical items at once and just in time for more infusions gauntlets of ogre power will jack your strength up to 19 not quite as much as ben but you can do 
some pretty impressive lifting for a scientist. Boots of Striding and Springing triple your jump distance. You can still cast the Jump Spell for 9 times your jump distance, and Step of the Wind for 18 times your jump distance, which would be 342 feet horizontally or 126 feet vertically, like chucking a bouncy ball on the ground to see how high it goes. You do need that amount of movement speed, but with Haste and Longstrider up, you have it. That's a bounce as big as Owen Wilson's. Big bounce sucked. 11th level artificers get spell storing item, which lets you store a spell of second level or lower into an item. You or another creature can cast that spell from that item an amount of times per day equal to double your intelligence modifier using your intelligence modifier, but more importantly, the creature casting the spell is the one who concentrates on it. So Herbie can cast enlarge on you and you can cast haste or alter self on yourself and effectively get two concentration buffs at the same time. Artificers are so good. I love them. I love how weird they can get. And this is one of the weirdest things we've ever made. I am having a great time on this one, folks. Our capstone is the 12th level of Artificer, letting you cap off your dexterity modifier for maximum dodging potential. It's actually only base 17, which isn't all that great. But with haste, it will be 19, which isn't so bad. Is this a bad build though? No, it's wild. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're incredibly mobile with giant jumps, big legs, and ways to get so big you can basically be a ladder for the team. You're also great at supporting the team with flash of genius and support spells to keep everybody doing weird stuff. Finally, you're dealing consistent damage with altered arms that deal 1d6 plus 1d4 plus 6 force damage each and 3 attacks per round with martial arts up to 6 with an action surge and flurry of blows. For weaknesses, if you want to hit people far away from you, get a bow. You have proficiency with bows and 2 capped modifiers you could use them with. The messy multi-classing also makes you a mad scientist, which means multi-ability dependent, so your AC isn't as great as it could be with better wisdom on unarmored defense. Finally, the infusions you have are good, but the 14th level ones are busted. Since you have no reason to actually get the lunging attacks, drop the fighter levels and invest more in Artificer. Unless you just want to stretch all the way to the other side of the stage, which you do because it's obviously the genius move. Whether you want everyone to see how wild and wacky your mind is, or you just want to hide out and keep your family safe, Reed and Sue are a power couple for a reason. Maybe just get like a tank on the team, otherwise things could get grim. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We're making double videos every day this month. Join the Patreon for these sheets and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.